So in this video we will focus on making two paths. Now one thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about the installation is that apart from the physical installation there's also some work that needs to be done in, uh, in Mach 3. You cannot use your normal Mach 3 milling profile, you will have to use an adapted version. I will assume that you already have a Mach 3 profile that works for your CNC machine. And I will show you how you can make a copy of it, place it on your desktop and from there you can make the necessary changes. The actual changes that you need to make I will not show you because they are very well um, documented on the Optlaser website. Next I will dive to you into Fusion. Here I also have to make an assumption that you already have a little bit of knowledge about toolpath making in relation to um, standard CNC milling. And with that in mind I will show you how you adapt that knowledge to make toolpaths for laser cutting. So let's dive into it. So as explained in the introduction I will show you how you can make a copy of an existing Mach 3 profile so you can adapt it to make it work with the laser. First thing you're gonna do is uh, look up the Mach 3 folder on your computer. In my case that will be on the C drive in the folder of Mach 3. There you're gonna look for the Mach 3 executable which is right here and if you click on that this window will open where you can either choose an existing profile for actual use or you can make a new profile. I can either choose to create a completely new profile or I can make a copy or a clone as it is called here from an existing profile. I will choose a profile that I already use for normal milling work. In my case it's this one. I give it a name and I will call it laser demo and I click OK. Once you have done that you will see that you will find an XML file with the profile that you just created which is this one in my case laser demo XML. What I want to do now is make a shortcut that I can place on my desktop and that will always immediately open this profile for me. To do that I go again to the Mach 3 executable but instead of opening it I just hit create shortcuts and I will put it on my desktop. What you need to do now is go on your desktop in the properties of this shortcut and then here for the target you just add a space a forward slash and then you type in the name of the profile that you created in my case it's laser demo you hit apply ok what I can do here is also rename the shortcut by hitting rename. I will call it laser demo and then we're all done. And then in Mark 3 all you have to do is make all the changes exactly as described on the Laser website. And then when you're done don't forget to save the settings in the config menu here under save settings. Once you've done that your laser should be working. Okay, so now let's have a look how we would make a toolpath for laser cutting. First, of course, we will need some kind of design. I will quickly make something like we start with a rectangle. Let's make that uh, 350 millimeters and 80 millimeters high. I will put some text in that. I'll make this text a laser 50 millimeters height is fine I will reposition that more or less in the middle okay then I will do a press pull I make it 18 millimeters thick but the thickness doesn't matter uh, because the laser operation is all happening on the surface of the material so whether your design is 18 millimeters thick or 10 kilometers that doesn't matter. Now let's do another press pull for the text. I'll make this 5 millimeters deep. That's not that important either. I hide the sketch and that's gonna be my design for the toolpath. 
So let's head over to the manufacturing workspace. The first thing you always need to do is uh, start with a new setup. In the setup you will basically define the size of the material that you are using as well as the location of the work coordinate. So I hit new setup. I always start with defining the stock. Often I choose from solid and I click the design that I made. And then I check if the coordinate is in the right point which is okay for me in the middle of the stock on the top face so that's fine and I will also define my model by just clicking on it and I hit OK. What I want to do is just laser the outline of my text but first let's have a look in the tool library. So I open the tool library and what I did is I made an end mill, this one here with a diameter of 0.05 millimeters, which is equal to 50 micron, which is the beam spot of the laser that I'm using. If I click on the tool, you can see the details. I just call it laser. I have set the type of the cutter to flat end mill, but that's not really important. It's a virtual cutter that you're actually creating. What is important is that you define the diameter of the, of the tool which equals, of course, the diameter of the beam spot of the laser that you're using. All the other parameters are less important. The shaft settings, I just left Blanco. The holder, I left Blanco as well. The cutting data, I entered for a spindle speed, which will uh, reflect the laser power. I entered 255 as a default. Later on, when I'm making an actual tool path, I can still change that to the value that I want and also the cutting feed rate defaults here to 100 millimeters per minute which is also a parameter that can still be changed later on when making a tool path. And the post processor, I also did not change anything here, I don't use number tools so the data here are not relevant. I'll cancel out of this because I didn't edit anything in this tool. So if I do laser cutting I select this tool which is kind of a virtual end mill you could say. So. What I want to do, as I said, I want to laser along the contours of my text. For that, I will select a 2D contour uh, toolpath. For the tool, I will choose, obviously, my virtual end mill. I do select. Um, the spindle speed, I will leave to 255. So, hence, I will be cutting at full power. And for the feed rate, I will put in 500 millimeters per minute. Then for the geometry I will make sure I will select the outlines of my letters and that I do that on the top of my uh, of my design not on the bottom. There I go. The rest you can leave as it is. Then important you have to set all the heights here in the height tab to zero. Before cutting we will set the laser at the correct distance from the workpiece and we do not want the laser to move up and down anymore while cutting. That is why we set all these heights to zero and as you will see in the simulation that will make sure that the laser will not move up and down. For the passes just make sure that you not have things like finishing passes and so on selected because that's not really needed when you're doing laser cutting. And then for the linking, we don't need lead-ins and lead-outs. That's something you might need when you work with a milling cutter but not with a laser, so I'll disable that. And for the save distance, I noticed that if you uh, do not change this to zero, the system will come up with a warning that your save distance is not compatible with your cutting heights. So I change that to zero as well. And I hit OK. Now let's simulate the tool path. We should observe that the tool indeed will follow the lines that we wanted to follow and also that the tool does not move up and down while cutting. So let's have a look. Simulate. Let's let it do its thing. That looks good. Let's have another look from the side so that we can indeed check that the tool does not move up and down and that seems to be perfectly okay. 
So I will close the simulation and the toolpath should be ready for uh, post-processing. Now for post-processing, obviously we will need to have a post-processor. If you look on the OptLaser website, under the support and manual section, you can find downloads and in the downloads, if you scroll a little bit lower, you will see a list of post processors. The one we need for Fusion is this one, Fusion 360 to Mach 3. I already downloaded it, so I don't have to do it again now. But once you have downloaded it, you still need to install it in Fusion. The way to do that is to go to your data panel, go to Assets, and in Assets you will find a folder called Campost. What you need to do is you need to click Upload, you select the file that you downloaded from the Oplaser website and you click Upload. And you will see the post processor appear here in the CAM posts folder. Now, going back to the toolpath, um, if we go to Actions and then Post Process, we are greeted with a post processor menu. Now, the first time that I tried to do post processing for a laser toolpath, I couldn't find the post processor that I uploaded uh, just a minute ago. The reason was that I was looking under the Fusion 360 library and the post processors that you upload yourself will not show up in the Fusion 360 library. They will show up, however, in the cloud library. And here you can select the correct one that you need. So that's how you find it. Once you see that the processor is the correct one, you can name your program. I will call this Laser Demo 2. You select your output folder. What I also do is I check this box, Open NC File Editor, because that will open my G code file in a text editor. I will tell you why in a minute, but before I do so, I want to point your attention to the fact that in your uh, Fusion preferences, you can choose which text editor the program needs to open for um, editing uh, G-code files. You do that in your personal preferences under the tab Manufacture and here in External Editor you can tell the program what text editor to open and for me I simply use Notepad. So back to the post processing menu I see I have to uh, rename my file again and I hit Post and I'm greeted with the G-code file in Notepad. In this case, we have set 255 for the RPM, meaning that we want the cut to be at 100% laser power, but if I change that value to something else, like 125 or so, the laser would still cut at 100% power. So I did some research on the Warp 9 Tech Design website, which is the maker of the Ethernet Smooth Stepper, and they have some information about laser cutting there. And what I found is this, the M3 command will enable the laser's PWM signal, which is what we need. So in their examples here, the G-code is always preceded by the M3 command. So that is why in Notepad, I simply manually add the M3 command, and that seems to do the trick for making sure the PWM signal comes through correctly and hence you can work with a variable laser power. So once you've added the M3 command manually, you can just save out your file and you're done. Now, a tip that I want to give you is once you have a toolpath that works the way you want it to work, you can store the toolpath as a template. What you can do with these templates is you can click on your setup and you can do create from template. I already created a template so if I just click 2D contour laser at 100% my template will open and the only thing I have to do now is open the toolpath and tell it where the geometry is that it needs to cut and then you just click OK because all the other settings like the heights and the linking that's all been saved previously. The big advantage is that of course that speeds up your workflow but maybe more importantly, that drastically reduces the chances of making errors in your toolpath. So now that we have something that we can actually cut on the CNC machine, the next video will be to do the actual cut and I will also show you the procedure that I use to set the correct Z height 
so that the laser focus point is where it needs to be. See you then. Bye bye.